Hello friends! Few people know that on October 6, 2020, Instagram celebrated its 10th birthday. This social network introduced us to the concept of selfies and photo filters. Opinions on this matter vary, but it was Instagram that initiated our obsession with likes. It's hard to find someone who doesn't have an Instagram account, or at least hasn't heard of it. Every day, millions of people post their photos, communicate, or promote their businesses through this social network. The word Insta has become familiar to us all, but many don't think about how this global phenomenon originated and who was at its origins. I won't drag on with introductions and will immediately tell you about how a few graduates of Stanford University managed to attract billions of people to their service and make a fortune out of it. Imagine the scene. Spring of 2006, an ordinary Stanford student, Kevin Sistrom, stands by the coffee machine at Café del Doge in Palo Alto unaware of how his life is about to change in the next moment. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, approaches him. A year earlier, Zuckerberg had invited him to leave university and develop a unique photo service for Facebook, but Systrom declined. In reality, it was simpler. The guy just wanted to finish his studies and start his own startup. Kevin Systrom was born on October 30th, 1983 in Massachusetts. In school, he showed interest in programming and often joked around with classmates, controlling the mouse cursor on other computers. In his spare time, he created levels for the game Doom 2 and worked part-time at the Boston Beat Store. In Boston, the youth excelled in programming, thanks to his education in a private school where the subject was taught more extensively than others. Therefore, it came as no surprise to anyone that after graduating from high school in 2002, he effortlessly gained admission to Stanford University, where he continued his studies in computer science with great vigor. Initially, university life seemed promising, as it was expected to provide him with new knowledge. However, our protagonist quickly became disillusioned. The institution focused too much on theory rather than practical application, and by the end of the first semester, he found himself covering material he had already mastered in high school. He took matters into his own hands, avidly reading programming books and outpacing his coursework. Eventually, he switched his major to management, inspired by the idea of entrepreneurship. During his college years, the young man's sister developed a serious interest in photography, even attending short courses in Italy. It was there that he discovered the foil camera, an inexpensive device manufactured in Hong Kong since the 1980s. Despite its modest quality, the camera's abundance of effects captivated him, this aesthetic, which you might have guessed, laid the foundation for Instagram. Interestingly, the app's iconic logo was sketched in just 45 minutes in a college dormitory and remained unchanged for nearly six years. With each passing day, the young man honed his skills. Even though he hadn't reached his third year, he boldly applied for the Mayfield Fellows Program. Within weeks, he received an enticing offer to participate in the project where he would eventually meet Mark Zuckerberg. Kevin was selected by Mayfield Fellows, and during his four-month internship, he created a podcast called The Internship. This experience served as significant motivation for him and led to valuable contacts in the high-tech world. Notably, two years later, the well-known Twitter emerged from the foundations laid by Odigo, where Kevin had interned. By the time he graduated from university in 2006, Kevin had accumulated considerable experience and knowledge. He even received job offers from Google and Microsoft, but ultimately chose Google, one of Silicon Valley's most successful startups at the time. After nearly three years there, he realized that the corporate environment stifled his entrepreneurial spirit. It wasn't the salary that attracted him, but rather the desire to create something of his own. In Boston, the youth excelled in programming. Thanks to his education in a private school, where the subject was taught more extensively than others. Therefore, it came as no surprise to anyone that after graduating from high school in 2002, he effortlessly gained admission to Stanford University, where he continued his studies in computer science with great vigor. Initially, university life seemed promising, as it was expected to provide him with new knowledge. However, our protagonist quickly became disillusioned. The institution focused too much on theory rather than practical application. And by the end of the first semester, he found himself covering material he had already mastered in high school. He took matters into his own hands, 
avidly reading programming books and outpacing his coursework. Eventually, he switched his major to management, inspired by the idea of entrepreneurship. During his college years, the young man's sister developed a serious interest in photography, even attending short courses in Italy. It was there that he discovered the foil camera, an inexpensive device manufactured in Hong Kong since the 1980s. Despite its modest quality, the camera's abundance of effects captivated him. This aesthetic, which you might have guessed, laid the foundation for Instagram. Interestingly, the app's iconic logo was sketched in just 45 minutes in a college dormitory and remained unchanged for nearly six years. With each passing day, the young man honed his skills. Even though he hadn't reached his third year, he boldly applied for the Mayfield Fellows program. Within weeks, he received an enticing offer to participate in the project, where he would eventually meet Mark Zuckerberg. Kevin was selected by Mayfield Fellows, and during his four-month internship, he created a podcast called The Internship. This experience served as significant motivation for him and led to valuable contacts in the high-tech world. Notably, two years later, the well-known Twitter emerged from the foundations laid by Odigo, where Kevin had interned. By the time he graduated from university in 2006, Kevin had accumulated considerable experience and knowledge. He even received job offers from Google and Microsoft, but ultimately chose Google, one of Silicon Valley's most successful startups at the time. After nearly three years there, he realized that the corporate environment stifled his entrepreneurial spirit. It wasn't the salary that attracted him, but rather the desire to create something of his own. After leaving Google, he was essentially jobless for a while. He spent several months working on an app for the company Next Stop at Home. It was during this time that gaming services combining geolocation posting with the ability to check in and earn points started gaining immense popularity. Foursquare was launched in 2009, with Systrom creating its prototype initially dubbed Bourbon. He successfully integrated all the functionality of Foursquare with the ability to share photos from gatherings and earn points for it. In December 2010, Kevin presented his prototype to the venture capitalist Steve Anderson of Buy Zolin Ventures, who agreed to invest $250,000 in the project. Anderson insisted on finding another business partner to help Bergen avoid losing interest quickly. Systrom had no choice but to accept the offer and quit next stop a few weeks later. However, the idea of entrepreneurship never left Kevin's mind. He knew he couldn't pursue it alone, so he teamed up with another Stanford graduate, Mike Krieger. Krieger excelled in psychology, linguistics, philosophy and coding, which proved beneficial for their venture. Their failed experience with Bergen's offer taught them valuable lessons. They understood the importance of not persisting with something if users didn't like it, prompting them to replace it with something else. This mindset led them to focus on developing a new version of their application. They worked tirelessly in a small San Francisco apartment, refining their ideas and coding for months. Their second pilot, with simplified features and a central focus on photo sharing, was markedly different from the previous version. Their concept was simple, to create a service where users could share stunning photos with friends in a matter of seconds. As for the name, they didn't deliberate much. The app was renamed Instagram, a blend of instant and telegram, reflecting its instant photo sharing capabilities. On the night of October 6, 2010, Instagram was launched on the web store. Kevin shared the news on Twitter and it spread rapidly among his friends and former users of Bourbon, eagerly anticipating its transformation. Their timing couldn't have been better, as the app coincided with the release of the iPhone 4 on June 7, 2010, equipped with a high-performance camera and a higher resolution screen. Owners of the iPhone now had a perfect tool for photography. Within hours, Instagram's tiny server collapsed under the weight of traffic. Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger retained their positions and continued working at Instagram, while the entire team, consisting of 12 people at the time, relocated to Facebook's office under their careful guidance. The application continued to evolve and expand its lineup of photo filters. Features like Boomerang, Stories and Direct Messages were launched. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg took serious steps to ensure the profitability of his new venture. It took at least three years for Instagram to start generating revenue. In 2015, 
The app introduced advertising inserts with videos and photos, along with hyperlinks for directing users to advertisers' websites. By the first quarter of 2016, Instagram's advertising revenue reached $500.73 million, accounting for 10% of Facebook's total revenue. On June 6, 2018, Bloomberg released data from its own analytics, revealing that Instagram, had it remained an autonomous company, could have surpassed a market capitalization of $100 billion by that time, which was a hundredfold increase compared to what Zuckerberg had paid six years earlier. Exactly three months after Bloomberg's report, on September 25, 2018, Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger announced their departure from the Instagram team. Bloomberg later reported that the founder's departure was due to increasing tensions in their business relationship with Zuckerberg. In November of the same year, while caught by journalists in San Francisco, Systrom explained that there were reasons for his and Krieger's departure, but he refrained from disclosing further details. With the emergence of Instagram, our entire life has become public. Even the most mundane activities like going to a restaurant or taking a trip out of town, which we previously didn't notice, have turned into an information event. Each of us is now our own social media series, originally conceived as an app for close ones. It has become a window into the lives of celebrities. The first star to register on Instagram was rapper Snoop Dogg, and when Justin Bieber created an account, the activity of the singer's fans almost crashed the server. In 2016, Systrom went to the Vatican to help set up the account for the Pope. Today, the number of followers for the top three celebrities on Instagram exceeds the population of Russia and the USA several times over. Cristiano Ronaldo has 347 million followers, actor Dwayne Johnson has 270 million, and singer Ariana Grande has 267 million. There's also Lionel Messi, with 267 million followers, along with many other bright and famous people who actively manage their Instagram pages and delight fans daily with new photos. Interestingly, the very first selfie from a phone was posted in 2011 by someone named Jennifer Lee in San Francisco, and after that, it took off. In a couple of years, the Oxford Dictionary declared selfie the word of the year, Many people post themselves several times a day and closely monitor their followers' reactions. It's safe to say that Instagram has turned our lives upside down, affecting how we communicate with each other, how we see the world, how we consume goods and information, and how we conduct our daily lives. Ever since Instagram became popular, it has been a powerful social network that determines where we travel, how we develop marketing strategies, and even how well we sleep. Thus, the photo processing app called Instagram has become the largest mobile social network, a place for communication for millions of people worldwide, and a convenient platform for doing business. Today, Kevin's sister is 37 years old and is a billionaire. It is also reasonable to assume that leaving Instagram for Facebook is not an early retirement, as 37 is the golden age for a billionaire in the high-tech industry. It may well be that soon he will surprise us again with something new and unusual. So, I guess that's all I wanted to tell you. I hope you liked the video and found it informative. And if so, as usual, give it a thumbs up and be sure to write in the comments how often you personally use Instagram. See you soon.